Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome everybody. And now we are going to start the next chapter of the first year chemistry that is the solids. Today is its lecture number one and the topic is the introduction to solids. Now what are solids? Solid state is actually one of the three fundamental states of matter which is the most stable and most common state of matter. Most stable mean having least energy and most common mean that most of the elements they are found in the solid state. Even in the periodic table, almost more than 100 elements they are found in the solid state. And the commonly used things in our daily life that are also in the solid state. What are the properties, general properties of the solids? First, they are rigid and hard because of very strong intermolecular forces between their molecules or particles. They have definite shape. They do not attain the shape of the container, but they have their own shape because of the specific position of their particles. They have definite volume. They do not occupy the complete volume of the container or you can say they do not occupy the volume available to them, but they have their own definite volume. <clears throat> there is no translational kinetic energy of the solid molecules. They have only vibrational or to and fro motion. So there is vibrational kinetic energy only. No exchange of energy between molecules. The molecules of solids, they do not collide typically with one another because of the lack of the translational motion. So because they do not collide with one another, that's why they do not exchange energy with each other. And there is no collisions between them, you can say. No diffusion or effusion. As there is no translational kinetic energy, the solid molecules are not free to move. So one solid does not mix into another solid or the solids do not show leakage. If the diffusion and effusion is present in them, that is negligible. An experiment was conducted in which one piece of the gold and one piece of the lead, they were adhered with each other for some time. And after that particular duration of time, when the microscopic examination of gold and lead was performed, there were some lead atoms in the gold and there were some gold atoms in the lead. So that was diffusion, but it was negligible. <clears throat> no expansion or compression. No expansion because the strong intermolecular forces are present between them. No compression because there are no intermolecular spaces available. They do not expand or compress just like the liquids and gases. Strongest intermolecular forces are present, which means they will be having least potential energy. Minimum intermolecular distance is present. The molecules are very compact. So because of their compactness, they have very high density because in lesser volume, greater mass is found. Now what are, generally speaking, what are two types of the solids? First are the crystalline solid, other are the amorphous solid. You must remember this difference as it is very important for short questions and MCQs, even in the different entrance tests. Crystalline solids are true solids. True in the sense that they have well-ordered arrangement of particles. When the microscopic examination of the crystalline solid is performed, the molecules in three dimensions, they are properly oriented, they are properly arranged, well-ordered arrangement is seen. Amorphous, A mean absent, morph mean shape. Amorphous mean there is no proper shape. That's why they are called as shapeless solid. It never means that they do not have definite shape in the sense they do have definite shape externally, macroscopically, but microscopically they do not have a definite arrangement of the particles. That's which is shown by this term shapeless solid. So random arrangement of the particles in three dimensions. There is no proper arrangement. There is no well-ordered arrangement of the particles. They are also called as pseudo solids or they are called as the super cooled liquids. Because it seems as if a liquid is super cooled. 
in liquids there is no ordered arrangement of the molecules or particles and in the amorphous solid they are same in that sense with the liquids that they do not have ordered arrangement of particles crystalline solids have a definite sharp melting point just like nsl which has a melting point of 801 degrees it is a specific sharp melting point and these characteristics characteristic of their sharp melting point is used in their identification so crystalline solids can be identified if we have the idea of their melting points while they do not have any definite melting point do not have definite melting point means when you melt the glass it starts melting at a particular temperature and then it goes on melting slowly so it starts melting at a particular temperature and then it ends melting at a particular temperature and that range is called as the starting and ending point the range range between is called as the melting point so they do not have definite melting point but their melting point is in range from 20 to 30 like this just as an example crystalline solids may be an isotropic mean by changing the direction their physical properties may change just like in case of graphite it is conductor parallel to the layers but insulator perpendicular to the layers so by changing the direction the physical properties are changed this is called as an isotropy and it is a particular feature of the crystalline solids while amorphous solids are always isotropic mean they show same physical properties in all the directions they have definite heat of fusion molar heat of fusion but they here there is no definite molar heat of fusion water of crystallization may be attached with the crystals of the crystalline solids like copper sulfate it is found in the pentahydrate form cuso4.5 h2 and so many other examples are there but in case of amorphous solids as there are no crystals no process of crystallization so it is out of the question to have the water of crystallization example sodium chloride it is an ionic solid iodine it is a molecular solid diamond it is a coagulant solid and copper it is a metallic solid from these examples i actually want to tell you that there are four types of the crystalline solids ionic molecular covalent and metallic and inshallah we will discuss them in detail in some lectures and what are the commonly observed examples of the amorphous solid there are so many but the commonly observed are glue rubber glass plastic wood waxes that's why they are also called as the glassy solids because the glass is a most commonly seen example of the amorphous solids now the next very important point is how can we convert the crystalline solids to amorphous solids that is not very much difficult the first is you are just required to melt the crystalline solid and when you will melt the crystalline solid it will be changed to liquid form and its ordered arrangement will be disturbed and then rapidly cool not cool just but rapidly cool it because the rapid cooling will not give time to the molecules to adjust themselves again on their ordered arrangement so when you will rapidly cool the molecules will not find time to have an ordered arrangement so they will remain disordered and in this way the crystalline solid will be changed to the amorphous amorphous solids just like the silica can be changed to the amorphous silica very easily now what are crystallites in amorphous solid we do not find the well ordered arrangement of the particles in the three dimensions but there are some small regions there are some small parts which are seen where there is ordered arrangement of particles and those small parts having ordered arrangement of particles are called as crystallites so these are the small crystalline parts of the amorphous solid just as an example suppose that this one is an amorphous solid having disordered arrangement of the particles but there is a area where there is well ordered arrangement of the particles so this small area that will be called as the crystallite so this was the introduction of the solids which includes their general properties the difference between the crystalline and amorphous solids how we, how we can convert the crystalline solid into amorphous solid and what are crystallites
in the next lecture inshallah we will come up with the properties of the crystalline solids till then allah hafiz